what's going on everyone welcome back to the channel and uh, part two of the arcade build how to build an arcade well this is how you do it at least this is how I'm gonna do it so today we're gonna cut the subfloor uh, for the platform that I'm building the L-shaped platform for my arcade one-ups kind of get them off the floor and also raise them up to an acceptable height for a six foot one tall guy to game on we're gonna rip this uh, plywood down get it to the appropriate thickness and then we've got a decision to make. We could just stick this on the, uh, you know, screw that down and call it good. Or we can add a little LED lighting, a little mood lighting to this platform. So what I'm doing now is I'm measuring the thickness of these LED strips that I have. And I'm going to select the appropriate router bit. And then what I want to do is route a groove down the entire length of these boards. Now I've got a scrap piece here I want to test. I'm trying to set my depth. I've got a guide. But the depth is something you got to kind of play with. So... I'm doing that now, and I'm also practicing that joint where they come together. And now I'm going to go ahead and test fit this LED strip without removing that protective film on the adhesive backing. And it fits uh, pretty snug. I think it's going to work out well. Now with all 24 feet of grooves routed, I'm going to hit the top of this with a roundover bit on the, uh, the corner that faces out, just to take away that sharp hard edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit these grooves with a little bit of uh, kilt primer. This is going to be the part that's going to extend beyond the base, kind of overhang, so I want this to be protected. Moisture is not your friend when you're dealing with MDF. This will absorb it like crazy. Okay, now it's time to mark the location of all my outlets. I'm just taking my straight edge, lining it up, then take it outside and measure the uh, inch and a half that makes up the thickness of the 2x4, and then get the dimensions of the... Uh, Go ahead and make this mark, and then I'm going to get the dimensions or the thickness of the outlets themselves. Make those marks, and I'll go ahead and use a small portion of bit to drill a few holes. That'll help me get started with my jigsaw blade. And if all your holes are in the correct place, you can bring this in and just drop it in place. That didn't really happen for me. This is probably the second or third time I came in making small adjustments because I didn't want to ruin the piece completely. Uh, I had to drill an extra hole for the extension cord that's going to um, actually feed power to the entire platform. So that's what I'm doing now. So with everything fitting nice, now it's time to just go ahead and fasten this down to the treated 2x4s. I'm just using finishing nails here. No adhesive, just finishing nails. Now it's time for everyone's favorite activity, painting. So since I'm using black paint, I'm going to go ahead and tape off the wall, obviously. And I'm not going to be too concerned about the floor because we're going to do something with that later. But definitely want to take care of the wall. And with all my tape in the way, I'm going to go ahead with a brush and paint around the outlets uh, a little bit tough to get to get that with a roller brush and for brushes I'm using an inch and a half uh, regular brush to get behind the outlets and then I'm using a three inch roller here to get these two by fours and no this is not the camera folks black paint when it's wet does not look black this actually looks like a nice dark navy but when it dries it turns very black but it can definitely freak you out when you first open up the can One of the more satisfying parts of the job is peeling off the tape to see that nice uh, crisp edge. Now not everyone knows how to wire up an electrical outlet, so here in the U.S. this is how we do it. Uh, you want to peel back the Romex coating and then the individual insulation on each wire. And then I like to take it and hook it to the right. That's going to be important here in a second uh, when you hook this up to the terminals. 
So on one side, you should have a short prong and a brass screw. That's where you want to attach your black wire. And then on the other side, where the tall prong is, you're going to have a silver screw, and that's where the white wire goes. Now you want to take the hook that you created on each wire, and you want to sort of point that in the clockwise uh, position so that as you tighten the screw, the wire will stay with the screw and travel with it. If you face it the other way, you may have a difficult time getting a good snug connection. And of course, the last thing to do is finish this up with a receptacle cover. And now the last thing to do is to peel off that uh, backing and place these LED strips inside the groove. And as long as my measurements were correct, the uh, groove should be completely exposed and not covered up by the 2x4s. Now the reason I did the routed groove is I wanted this to shine down at the floor and create more of a glow. I didn't want the LEDs to shine directly at you. So now let's... Uh, Let's kill the lights and see how it turned out. Okay, so I think this looks awesome. And this LED strip also came with a remote. So I can cycle through different functions. I can pick a standard color. Uh, this function here is just fading in and out. I can make it flash. I can make it uh, activate with music. So there's a lot of different options here, but I'm, I'm really happy with this. And now comes the fun part where we get to bring out the cabs and start figuring out what layout I'm going to go with. I'm going to start by plugging in all the AC adapters. And then I'm just going to grab a cab and put it in place and see how it works. This layout may change over time, but for the most part, I think it works out pretty well. I've got one cab I think I'm going to put in. You'll see it towards the end. It's the Street Fighter cab. That may change. That may be just removed completely and replaced with the Big Blue Act coming next month. And in the corner, because it's so tight, I went ahead and put my one-player cabs over there, the Golden Tee and the Pac-Man. It's so tight in that corner, I think just uh, two people would just uh, have a hard time. Okay, with everything in place, let's, uh, let's shut down the lights, turn on the cabs, and see how this thing turned out. Well, needless to say, this is incredibly satisfying. It's nice to have all my cabs in a designated area where at any point I can just walk up to them, turn them on, and start gaming. It's difficult when you have these things sort of scattered around your house. But uh, now that they're here and now that they're four inches off the ground, I'm not going to be concerned if the basement ever slightly floods or if we get a spill on the floor. And because I'm 6'1", these are now at the perfect gaming height. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And don't worry, this is just the beginning of the arcade. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I will see you next time. Thank you